Hi guys, um, it's a beautiful morning here in Michigan. Lately we've been having really high temperatures. We usually have very moderate summers here in Michigan where I live, but it's been kind of for like three, four weeks, uh, no rain and uh, upper 80s and uh, 90s, which is around what, upper 20s and 30s Celsius. So really nice summer weather. So it's been kind of hard to work in the yard uh, during the day because it's really hot. But mornings and evenings are really pleasant. A few days ago, I was um, running some errands and I needed some soil, so I went to Lush Lighting, a local store here in uh, Niles, and they have amazing succulent selection. So guys, if you're in the area, I would highly recommend you check them out. And they have some really big specimens. So I came across this a really large overgrown Fred Ives and the owner said well it's been there for a while so he's gonna sell me for ten dollars and I was excited because I wanted to play with it you know propagate and see what I can do with it so today I want to share with you um, you know tips for care and propagation of Fred Ives you if you watch my past videos then you know that I really enjoy this plant and I have in the past successfully propagated it so guys, when it comes to soil, just like with other succulents, uh, Fred Ives, Scriptovaria, likes uh, well-draining soil. So a uh, mix that I use, like I shared in my other videos, is one-third cocoa brick, one-third espoma, cactus soil, and one-third perlite. You could probably create your own mix, or you can buy a miracle Grow cactus mix. I'm not the biggest fan of that one, but you know, this is not a very fussy plant, so it might work out. When you hear word Graptovaria or Graptocetum, it means that it's a hybrid plant between Echeveria in this case and Graptopetalum. So this is a hybrid between Echeveria gibiflora and uh, Graptopetalum ghost plant. A uh, super resistant plant uh, that looks beautiful all through the year, very opportunistic, meaning if it has good conditions, it's gonna grow and propagate all through the year. Uh, when it comes to watering, uh, you can leave it dry for longer periods than some other succulents. You see it has these big plump leaves so it can survive for a while. But also it doesn't uh, fuss too much if you overwater it. So it's very forgiving if you're a beginner and learning how to take care of succulents. Um, same thing with sun. You can um, have it in a partial shade and it will survive. It will probably change colors because what's really nice with this succulent is that it gets all kinds of different colors. You can have green turquoise if it's you know, in shade, or you can get bronze, orange, yellow, purple, pink, all of those colors when it's like in full sun, or I have it under light, so it gets really deep pink. And uh, this one was under lights. They have lights that, uh, I don't know if you can see how the color is. It has a little bit of pink edges. Maybe I'm going to turn it uh, on the camera on the other side when I start propagating it so you can see better. So like I said, with the uh, sun, you can either have it, you know, on a full sun, I have facing south and uh, on a very high temperatures, like 100, and it's not going to be negatively affected like, for example, a Chivarius. The Chivarius, when you put on a a high heat, um, full sun, they're gonna get cooked. And this has happened to me in the past. They're more sensitive. So this one is pretty resilient plant. When it comes to temperatures, it can tolerate some low temperatures as well. So it can be like if you're living like me in Michigan, one of the last plants that you're gonna take inside end of October or beginning of November, depending when uh, really freezing temperatures come. So, and it's very prolific, um, fast grower and easily propagates. So today I just wanna do something with this because it's very laggy, as you can see. But it's gonna be interesting to see what the stem is gonna produce when, uh, and the, how fast the leaves will propagate when I cut this plant. So let's start. So guys, when I uh, brought this plant two days ago from Lush Lighting, um, it was much more dehydrated. Uh, so um, that's what the owner was saying. It was a little bit dehydrated, was sitting there for a while, so that's why he decided to sell it for such a low price. Um, so when you get the plant that's pretty dehydrated and you want to propagate it, I would recommend first soak it well in the water. So I had rainwater and what I did 
I filled this pot with the water, literally, like it, the water was sitting, because it's a double pot. So you see there is a plastic pot with coals, and I knew the water will run through. Actually, there is still some water in the pot here, and I wanted it to be soaked well and absorb some of that water before I cut it, so it has more energy to propagate. So guys, look at how big this rosette is. And that's pretty large, right? But this can actually be probably twice as large. So some of the Fred Ives, probably in California, not around here in Michigan, can grow so big in diameter. So I'm thinking to cut this head off and then propagate some of the leaves. I'm just trying to figure out where to cut. I bought these little fiskers that I love because I was using these at the conservatory and they're like so easy to cut with. You can cut small plants or you can cut some bigger plants. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about pests. So mealybugs and aphids do attack fred ives. So I suppose you use the same treatment as with other succulents. All right. Here, I went in between leaves. I don't want to damage too many leaves. So here it is. And I'm going to start removing some of these bottom leaves because um, we can propagate leaves. And also you need to free the stem on the bottom so that it can you know, be placed in the soil to root. So I'm going to start wiggling these leaves so I don't damage them. Look at how big they are. And that's a nice thing with Fred Ives. It has such a big plumpy leaves that you see results really quickly. Three. I'm going to probably have at least four leaves removed. All right, so here is how it looks, guys. Uh, you can leave it to callus to dry up before placing in the soil, but if you have a dry soil, you can place it right away. And if you have rooting hormone, you can uh, you know, put some rooting hormone on the bottom and place it in the soil right away, even if it's mildly wet. Um, it's not necessary to have a rooting hormone, but it does help you have a peace of mind if you wanna propagate right away and not, you know, and place it in a damp soil. So here is what's left on the stem. I think I'm gonna remove some of these leaves as well and maybe even cut this stem and put this stem in the soil as well. So what I'm gonna do is cut the stem shorter, like here, and I'm gonna use this middle stem to place in the soil. But I'm gonna remove a few leaves first. And those we're gonna observe and see how fast they're gonna produce some results like that and then the existing stem does have some rosettes it looks like it has a little bit of it's either aphid or mealybugs there is white um, tiny little white dots so I might spray it just in case and then there is one rosette that grew out of the stem. I suppose I don't have to remove that one today. I can just, uh, yeah, it's mealybugs, guys. Okay, a few mealybugs, not too many. And um, I might give it a bigger pot because I think it may be because of the size of the plant, maybe it was root bound in this little, little pot. Let's see. You can check that by seeing if there is roots, you know, at the bottom of the pot. So, yeah, there is roots at the bottom, quite a bit of roots. So, um, I think I'm going to give it a little bit bigger pot. And, um, and this is a cute pot too. And then I'm going to show you when they're ready. So I will be using rooting hormone just because the reason why I was going to Lush Lighting when I bought this plant two days ago is I needed some cocoa brick and to prepare cocoa brick you have to you know soak it in water so it's still wet the, the soil mixture that I made so because it's a little bit wet and damp um, 
I just want to make sure that, uh, and I want to put this plant right away in the soil. I just don't want to get root rot or stem rot. So I'm going to put the rooting hormone and then place this Fred Ives in the pot. There it is, guys. And I'm going to do the same thing with this um, middle of the stem. And I suppose I can um, place around all these leaves uh, wherever I find place in, in this pot because there is more space. Um, I'm going to do that when the soil just dries a little bit up because I don't want these leaves to sit in a wet water. So And make sure not to propagate the leaves in a full blasting sun on a high temperature. If they're left like on a open space with a, on a high temperature and full sun they're gonna just dry up be cooked so just like with anything that's um, any baby plants require a little more care so even though um, Fred Ives is very resilient when it's a tiny plant you know it's it's a little bit harder for them to survive on a on a heat so so guys I will let you know how fast these rosettes will grow I would expect some results in the next few weeks so I'll see you in the next video